let us focus on the second part of the session that is proportion right equality of two ratios is termed as proportion when we have two ratios as equal then the equality of the two ratios we call it as proportion suppose if you are having something like 3 is to 4 i can say 3 is to 4 is definitely same as 6 is to 8 because 6 is to 8 if you are simplifying we'll be getting again 3 is to 4 when we have two terms i mean two ratios in proportion like a is to b is in proportion with c is to d then we use two full columns to represent that one which is read as a is to b is same as c is to d and if you are considering the ratio i mean the proportion the example that we have considered 3 is to 4 if it is in proportion with 6 is to 8 then we can say 3 is to 4 is same as is read as, is read as 3 is to 4 is same as 6 is to 8 and here we have some points like b and c are the inner terms that we are having of that particular proportion then the inner terms we have a specific name for them we call them as means and we have a and d as extremes and we have those two terms ask outer terms the, the two outer terms we call them as extremes and when we have two ratios in proportion all of us know that product of means will be equal to product of extremes this is what we have already studied earlier so product of means is equal to product of extremes and why or how it will be happening in that way to understand that one we need to just go back to our ratio example and if you are observing carefully here is that holding true or not means yes definitely will be holding true here what are the means we are having here means 4 and 6 so product of means will be 4 into 6 24 and product of extremes 3 and 8 is again 24 3 into 8 is 24 so product of means is equal to product of extremes yeah as mentioned to find i mean how we'll be having the product of means is equal to product of extremes possible we need to just go back to our ratio definition we know a ratio like a is to b can be represented even in the form of fraction like a by b and if you are just looking at this particular case the original case like a is to b is in proportion with c is to d so we know a by b is the first one and c by d is the second ratio and we know equality of two ratios is equal to i mean equality of two ratios is called as proportion and if we have a is to b is same as c is to d by going for cross multiplication ad is equal to bc only will be having or not so that is the reason every time we'll be having product of means is equal to product of extremes so this is one important point that we have to keep in mind while dealing with proportion and here we have to consider the point that here the first term is called as first proportion second term is second proportion third term is third proportion and the last term is fourth proportion like a is the first proportion b is the second proportion c is the third proportion and d is the last proportion and if we know any i mean out of four terms if three terms are given we can definitely find the fourth term using that product of means is equal to product of extremes let us look at some more points on proportion yeah let us focus on different relationships possible on proportion if we have two ratios in e i mean as equal we consider it as proportion we know so if you have a is to b is in proportion with c is to d let us focus on the different relationships yeah earlier we focused on inverse ratio if inverse ratio means reversing the terms like a is to b if it is the ratio b is to is a is the inverse ratio of that one so if you are focusing on invertendo we'll be inversing the terms first two terms and the second two terms like a is to b if you are looking at uh, and proportion with c is to d invertendo for that one what we can say it's b is to a proportion with d is to c that is what we call it as invertendo and altertendo means if we can interchange a and c terms i mean b and c terms there and get the ratio like what we can say is if we have a is to c same as that proportion with b is to d that is what we call it as inver i mean alternando and the next one if you are looking at componendo componendo is basically obtained by adding one to both the terms like we know a x to b can be written as a by b add one in the same way c is to d can be written as c by d so add one so that means what we can say is what we'll be having as alternando means a plus b if you are taking the lcm here a plus b is to b by 
I mean, uh, uh, component for that one, I mean, component for that one will be C plus D by D will be having in that way, right. And in the same way, if you are looking at dividend, I mean, alternate component and dividend, dividend means subtracting one. So, if you are considering A plus A by B, subtracting one from that one, will be having A by B minus one will become A minus B by B. And C minus C by C by D minus one will become C minus D by D. And we can go for combination of these two to get one more thing, componendo and dividendo. And componendo and dividendo for two terms like A is to B and C is to D, the two ratios we are if we are using, what we can say is A plus B by B. That is what is added to this one A minus B by B. So that means what we can say is it's A plus B by A minus B will be getting in proportion with C plus D by C minus D. So if you are applying componendo and dividendo, here I need to mention it as full columns. Yeah. So A plus B by B is in proportion with C plus D by D. And in the same way, if you are applying component dividendo, it will become A minus B by B is to C minus D by D will be, will be having. So, if you are going for the combination, adding the denominator to the numerator and subtracting the denominator from the numerator, that is A plus B by A minus B. And the same way, adding denominator here to the numerator and subtracting denominator from the denominator, numerator will be getting dividend low, like C plus D by C minus D. Yeah. Let us focus on the last one, continued proportion. Continued proportion is basically for three terms normally we use. Though I have mentioned A is to B is to C is to do in that way. If we have three terms like A, B and C are there, then we say that they are in continued proportion. If we have A is to B is in proportion with B is to C, right. And here if you are using the basic property like product of means is equal to product of extremes, B square is equal to, we will be having product of means is equal to product of extremes A and C. If we have three terms A, B and C in such a way that A is to B is in proportion with B is to C, then A, B and C are said to be in continued proportion. And here the point is B square is equal to A, C we have or B we can write it as square root of A, C. So, B is called as mean proportion. And one more point that we can say here is B square is equal to A, C. From that one I can say C is equal to B square by A. So, we can write that I mean, we can we call that C term the third term as th I mean, what we can say third proportion. So, if you have three terms like A, B, and C, what is the third proportion of those two terms? I mean, those three terms means it's B square by A. We can say mean proportion is basically square root of the product of the extremes, and third proportion is basically B square by A. So, in that way, we can go for the different aspects or different relationships on proportion.